The 1980s was the best decade ever. It gave us pop culture that we still thrive off of even today, music you could dance to that wasn't disco, and movies that we still won't shut up about. You're gonna see some serious shit. And we won the Cold War. God, I miss the 80s. But should I? Guys, we're gonna jump into the video, but give me this two seconds to tell you, I done hit me 1,000 subscribers. Well, actually I'm about three subscribers short, but we're gonna call it 1,000 subscribers. And I've got a special announcement. I am doing a 1,000 scub giveaway. I'm gonna be giving away these fantastic prizes. So do me a favor, leave a comment in this video with the word subscribed. In the one week's time, I will be doing drawings to give away one of these prizes, one prize per winner. So I'm gonna have as many winners as possible. And to congratulate not only me, but us as a community, Cousin Emmy has a message for you. Hello. <laughs> Good luck with the giveaway. Bye. The orderly transfer of authority as called for in the Constitution routinely takes place as it has for almost two centuries. And few of us stop to think how unique we really are. In the eyes of many in the world, this every four-year ceremony we accept as normal is nothing less than a miracle. The 1970s closed with a recession hitting the country and an energy crisis caused by the Iranian Revolution, and that caused oil prices to skyrocket. Inflation was running up while hopes and dreams were running down. In 1979, a man stepped forward and said that government wasn't the solution that was the problem. And a great new conservative movement had began with the election of Ronald Reagan. In this present crisis, government is not the solution to our problem. Government is the problem. It is time to reawaken this industrial giant, to get government back within its means and to lighten our punitive tax burden. And these will be our first priorities. And on these principles, there will be no compromise. Reagan believed that the economy was stalling because industries in the market were overregulated. He wanted to help companies lower costs and improve efficiency, thus improving company profits, which they would then turn and invest more back into the economy, providing more jobs and more wealth, thus trickling down to the working class. Trade barriers were blocking vital competition to keep prices down, Reagan believed, so he removed those barriers, and the Great Trade War began. This is when we started seeing more and more goods made in Japan. No wonder this circuit failed. It says made in Japan. What do you mean, Doc? All the best stuff is made in Japan. Commercialism exploded in the 1980s. Shopping malls became the cool place to hang, and as people in my generation remember, we loved the 80s because we as children were so wonderfully and heavily marketed to. Following the 1977 release of Star Wars and George Lucas's killer deal retaining licensing rights for merch, including toys, toy manufacturers were simply unprepared for the demand on Star Wars action figures and playsets. This wouldn't be the case when the sequel came out in 1980. Saturday Morning Cartoons saw a new rebirth as toy manufacturers got into the creative side of things and started producing cartoons around their toy lines. VHS won the home video war against Beta, and Americans could start watching movies at home anytime they wanted. Michael Jackson moonwalked across the stage at a time when disco was dead and music had nothing to fill the void in a recording industry that was dying, and his Thriller album gave birth to a new generation of pop music. The Sony Walkman allowed us to listen to our music wherever and whenever we wanted. MTV gave us music videos 24-7, since they didn't show black people in it, it introduced Americans to a new generation of punk and rock music. Deregulated banks got more into the credit card scene, and Americans shopped till they dropped. The rise of cable TV gave us a reason to stay in at night after the malls closed, and Nintendo gave us something to do because there was never anything good on cable. Government spending and our military buildup during the Cold War against communist USSR provided nearly a quarter of our nation's GDP. Heck, my own dad had a great union job working at a plant that built anti-aircraft guns for the Navy. It truly was morning in America again. It's morning again in America. 
today, more men and women will go to work than ever before in our country's history. Reaganomics, or what we now call trickle-down economics, is the idea that if you cut taxes on the wealthy and large corporations, they would invest more into the economy and create more jobs and produce more goods. The results of this are still being debated to this day, but reports show that these three things happened. The companies used the tax savings to buy back more shares of their own company, lining corporate pockets versus trickling down to the working class. The middle class actually shrank by 5% by the end of the decade. And some companies and manufacturers could not compete with the now open-door trading from other countries who sold products at far less prices, leading to a generation of layoffs and people having to find jobs in entirely different industries. Between the large tax cuts and massive increase in defense spending, Reagan started running a large federal deficit, which capped at about $240 billion. Interest rates were also somewhat volatile as the Fed raised interest rates to fight the early 80s recession and later to help combat rising prices during the government's massive government spending and deficit. Overall, the 80s saw interest rates as high as 20%. Fixed mortgage rates started the decade at almost 13% and ended the 80s at just under 10%, far higher than now. However, if you have the cash to invest, you could get CDs, which are certificates of deposits sold by banks, where a person agrees to give the bank a large amount of cash between six months to all the way up to five years for interest rates of 12 to 15 percent, which is almost a white unicorn dream of an interest rate for investors now, which typically max out at 5 percent if you have the high amount of cash to put in for long term deposits. Some believe the 1980s ended on October 19th, 1987. Good evening. Today is Black Monday, the day the Dow dropped more than 500 points. The day the Dow dropped more than 22 percent, almost double the rate of the Black Monday that signaled the beginning of the crash of 1929. The deregulation of the markets led to some companies booming and many investors putting more and more into Wall Street where we were told that greed is good. In 1987, stocks raced upward at unprecedented speed. The Dow Jones gained 44% in just seven months. Most seasoned investors know that if a market is rising too high, too fast, it's a bubble that's about to burst. And on Monday, October 19th, investors pulled their money from the market, and the Dow Jones dropped by nearly 25%, something not seen since the Great Depression. The party was over. The 1980s was a decade of massive change for the American economy, from policies from Reagan to the rise of new technologies. I would say that the most positive note about the 80s was, quite frankly, our GDP growth. Our GDP grew on an annual rate of about 3.5%, which is great. That means jobs are being created and America was, was working and our economy was growing. Reagan implemented some substantial tax cuts, most notably the Economic Recovery Tax Act of 1981, which actually lowered the federal income tax rate. The 80s also saw significant deregulation in certain industries like telecommunications, uh, airlines, finance, and this led to increased competition and innovation, which temporarily saw lower prices for consumers. This also created a lot of uh, millions of new jobs during the 80s, particularly in the service sector and the technology industries. But the tax cuts... While they stimulated growth, they also led to a significant increase in our nation's debt. Less taxes coming in, a lot of money going out, especially with our military building. And the federal deficit ballooned as the government was spending and outpacing the revenue. On the downside of the 80s, and this is probably the thing that gets talked about the most, is the benefits of this economic growth was not evenly distributed. The gap between the wealthy and the poor widen considerably during the entire decade. There was a huge uh, savings and loan crisis. Uh, the deregulation of the financial industry contributed to the savings and loan crisis. Uh, this saw the collapse of over 1,000 savings and loan institutions, costing taxpayers billions of dollars in bailouts. There was also a huge manufacturing decline in the 80s as a lot of those jobs as the factories closed and those jobs went overseas as we started buying more and more products from other countries. Finally, I think the thing that gets talked about the least is the rise in homelessness and poverty in the 80s. 
This is part of that social class widening. The rich got richer and the poor got poor. And unfortunately, Reagan did cut a lot of the social welfare programs and mental health programs. Guys, I'm Trader Bubba. Thank you so much for helping me reach 1,000 subs. I really appreciate you all. Leave a comment down below, like, subscribe, do all that stuff. Hey, if you like the shirt, guess what? It's for sale, but not for much longer. So grab it now. All proceeds go to charity. I've chosen St. Jude's Children's Hospital. I usually give to them around the holidays. Why not give to them during the summer too? So do me a favor, check out TraderBubba.com. You can follow me on Facebook where you can also get a discount code. Just look for a picture because of Emmy here. And if you'd like to support the channel, you can become a channel member where I will do exclusive content and more importantly, exclusive giveaways. The 1980s was a wild, wild decade. For some, it was great. For others, not so great. It was the catechism of pop culture, still relevant to this day, and in an economy that affected not only the 1980s, but also all the way through the two early 2000s. Listen, for some, the 80s was wonderful. For others, not so much. And that is American history. We as Americans need to accept all aspects of our history. This is a great country. We are free. If you can only look back on the 80s as good, that's okay. God bless you. I can't complain about the 80s because, again, my dad had a job from the Cold War. But that job went away in the early 90s after the Berlin Wall fell. And you know what? Life wasn't so good for the family after that. And that's just the way the cookie crumbles. But if we can look back on the 80s for both the good that Reagan provided, but also accept the bad that he provided, guess what? You just became a more well-rounded American. There's nothing wrong with looking at our political leaders and accepting both the good and the bad. We need to get better at that in this country, and that's what this channel is all about. But if there's one thing I've learned when it comes to economic policies, this country has a history of leaving some people behind. And that is something I would love to see change permanently with economic opportunity for all who are willing to grab it. And I think that's what makes this country great now. This country doesn't need to be great at the end. If you're willing to work hard, learn a trade or a craft, or if you're willing to learn and be an entrepreneur, the sky's the limit. I'm Trader Bubba. Y'all stay safe out there. Hey y'all, thanks for stopping by here at Trader Bubba's where we talk about growing and protecting our Hmm. I guess I should answer the call to freedom. While I'm on the phone, do me a favor. Check out my other videos. You won't regret it. Hello.